Welcome back. So today let's talk about polycarbonate lenses and are they actually potentially contributing to making our eyesight worse? And there's some legitimate and interesting research that points at that possibility. And I wanna show you this research. I wanna show you why it matters, specifically why it matters unintended maybe by the original studies and why it also maybe doesn't matter depending on your individual case. Stick with me for this one. There's various pieces that we have to assemble. Are polycarbonate lenses bad for your eyes? Let's start with a post from Val in the support forum and I'm just gonna read a little piece of this for you. And I'll show you the study next. So Val says, I read through most of this study that talks about possible mechanism for how the eye uses chromatic aberration to guide its amateurization. I find this very interesting because plastics have an abbey number much added to the aberration they cause in and of themselves. A polycarbonate is particularly bad why a standard CR39 CR is pretty okay. And actually, standard CR39 is almost as good as glass in terms of abbey numbers, which we'll discuss more in a little bit of detail next. But glass is 59 and then CR39, which are the cheapest lenses you can buy for glasses, interestingly are 58, and then polycarbonate is around 30, which is which is terrible. The chromatic aberration is is 50% higher basically when you wear polycarbonate than when you wear actual glass, which you can't buy anymore, or CR39. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I remember back when I still had expensive glasses with polycarbonate looking at open signs at night at a slight angle and red open being entirely out of the blue light tube that should have been around it. Let's just use this little piece of this. So Val read a study, which I'll show you a little piece of, and the study says, the title of it is, evidence that the eye uses longitudinal chromatic aberration to guide eye growth. And this is really interesting for a different reason, which is it shows that the actual length, the length of your eyeball, which is the primary issue with myopia when your eyeball is too long, and mainstream optometry says is something that just happens, go figure, that it's actually affected by a number of different environmental stimuli. This is an animal study. We've discussed human studies here on the YouTube channel. I'll try to link some of that stuff below. It's really important because the science tells a much different story than retail optometry and the people that sell you lenses. So the study basically says that chromatic aberration is one of the ways that the eye guides growth, guides change in axial length. And I'll link that study below if you want to read that stuff. Interesting, right? Now let's get into the lenses part. And so, for those of you not exactly familiar with chromatic aberration, I'll read you the exact definition. The material effect produced by the refraction of different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, light, through slightly different angles, resulting in a failure to focus. It causes colored fringes in the image produced by the uncorrected lens. So, different wavelengths of light, meaning different colors of light, are being refracted differently, right? by different quality lenses, by different quality of materials, by different types of materials. So depending on what you wear, even though it looks like a clear piece of material, actually causes varying degrees of chromatic aberration, which means colors don't exactly line up, right? Red, green in particular are important. To a very tiny de degrees, but those very tiny degrees may be something that your eye uses to adjust axial length which is really fascinating and really kind of disturbing. And let's also look at the Abbey numbers and they are Crown Glass 59, CR 39, 58, Polycarbonate 30. And if you get high index, a little bit higher, 36, still not fantastic. And Abbey value, Abbey value of the lens material is an objective measure of how widely the lens disperses different wavelength of light as light passes through it, right? So here is basically the complete picture. Study that says chromatic aberration might contribute to the change in axial length of your eye. Longer axial length means more myopia. Different types of lens material have different abbey numbers to a 
great varying degree, which basically says they refract different colors, different wavelengths differently. So let's get to the, the question of are polycarbonate lenses bad for your eye? And if you go to a shop to buy glasses, they're always going to push you towards polycarbonate. So the mainstream isn't going to use the fact that polycarbonate has really low Abbey numbers as an incentive to not sell you them. They actually want to sell you polycarbonate lenses, even though they're not great in some respects. On the flip side, CR39 lenses, which are really cheap, have very high Abbey numbers. So you can only really use CR39 if you have really low myopia, under well under two diopters. If you have high myopia, they get thick. CR39 gets thick really quickly. I'll try to remember to link stuff below on CR39 lenses. I always recommend them for low diopter myopia, but if you have high diopter myopia, you end up using polycarbonate just because they stay thinner. You can get higher index lenses. Uh, they also drill better. So if you're if you're uh, using lenses that don't have frames around them where the, the actual uh, lens material is drilled, you're going to need polycarbonate. It's also more shadow resistant, even though that's just bullshit sales pitch. The takeaway from this is, one, you don't really have a choice. If you have high diopter myopia, you need high index, high index lenses, low Abbey number. This just goes back to the whole story of myopia is a mess. Other videos we discuss how myopia is preventable, other videos we discuss how myopia may be reversible. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of reasons you want to reverse your myopia to not be dealing with these issues or not even have to know anything about these issues. But if you already have myopia, what I've found, and science, the science is fascinating because the science makes it so we don't have to guess and we don't have to pray to the rain gods and we don't have to make up fluffy unicorn stories as to why things are what they most likely are. However, from a practical perspective in the last decade and literally thousands of students, I have not seen any negative impact from using poly lenses. Basically what that means is the rate of improvement, the rate of change of myopia hasn't been any different from somebody who uses a poly lens versus somebody who uses a CR39 lens. Then there's also the subject of contact lenses. Overall, the rate of change in myopia discussed in another video gets dubitable if I'm going to remember to link that. But I discussed your myopia, you can get your myopia to go down by a little less than one dollar a year for most people. And that rate of change if you average it out over a decade and a few thousand people, is about constant. So there are there are variations, but we haven't found variations depending on lens material. So while polycarbonate affects how you see your surroundings, affects how you see colors, may affect all kinds of other things because your brain, your visual cortex is way more complex than modern science is able to understand and affects a lot more things potentially than just variations in color that you don't even realize get rid of the myopia ideally but the polycarbonate lenses aren't going to stop you from improving your eyesight the thing to note here is these are things that if you go to your average mainstream optometrist they don't know probably the odds are they don't know much if anything about any of this stuff that we discuss here important for you to understand is there's a ton of science we have a, a lot of science to back up and use for the whole myopia discussion. And at the same time, the practical piece of it, the piece of not scaring you, not forcing you to use particular lenses, not forcing you to use particular lens coatings, other than making sure that there's no reflection, like I like those coatings, a lot of the stuff that you're being sold is just unnecessary. Uh, also gonna try to remember to link below a blog post discussing the impact of these things and how science is used, sometimes misused to sell you things that you don't need. And on the flip side, a lot of things that you've been sold called medicine don't even have anything to do with science. So educate yourself to the degree that you like. I separate the science from the practical application. If you look in the blog under the how-to sections, we go straight to what affects your myopia degree. How do you reduce your myopia without you having to dig through all the science bits? But if you're interested in them, if you want to 
understand a lot more than the mainstream knows and tells you and the things behind the scenes of how myopia is controlled by the mainstream, read this stuff. Links below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That's all I have to say on this. There's a lot more, but look at the links below if you're interested. And uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.